All right, now that we have a few images up on our canvas, let's add some text. There are many reasons to add text to your scribe. Sometimes if you're doing a client whiteboard animation project, your client will have a slogan that they'd like you to add at the end. Sometimes adding text will really hammer home a key point. And in some cases, I've actually chosen to use text. If I couldn't find an image to properly get across the idea that I was trying to get across. So there are many reasons to use text and I really like some of the options that Videoscribe gives you with text. So let's go up here to the text icon. We'll click on that. The text style is currently set to basic, which is the default text on Videoscribe. Let's type in our message here. Let's type in first day on the job. Okay, and we will check mark that. It shows up on our canvas directly in the center of the canvas. As you'll see, whenever you add elements to Videoscribe, this is the, that was the auto save there. As you add elements to Videoscribe, they will show up at the end of your timeline, like so, and highlighted in blue here, which means that this is the current element in use. So it's highlighted here and it's the element I can drag around. So I'm gonna make that text element bigger and obviously I don't want it over the images so let's just put it let's put it right here and then we're gonna move the canvas up and lock that let's quickly just make the draw time shorter and we'll preview it so that's what the basic text that comes with Videoscribe looks like. Let's say I would like to change that text. Maybe the client I'm doing a project for has a specific text that they would prefer me to use. I will click on this, go into the properties icon and click this T here that says change the text or font. Let's click on that and this plus and minus arrow would allow me to go through any of the text that have currently been imported into Videoscribe. But let's say I wanna import a new text that's within my computer's font library. I would go to this F icon here and that will allow me to import text. So I can now see all the text I have available. In most cases, I prefer to use text that look like they're handwritten because obviously Videoscribe is showing a hand writing out the text. So I would choose maybe a gentle touch, a simple life. I'm going to import a little pot font. So let's click on it here. This will show you all of the different styles that your font could come in Hebrew, Arabic, Greek, and a few more. So depending on if you have these installed, they would all import, but I'm just gonna uncheck all of those and stick with the basic characters. So I'm gonna click this check mark here. It will import 400 characters of this text into Videoscribe. Okay, now that's done and you can see here that the font will now show up as a little pot font when we go back into Videoscribe. I'm going to change the color. It defaults as black. I'm gonna put it uh, to this blue here. Now, I'll just go back in there for a second. See how the hex code for that exact color comes up when you choose it? Let's say you are creating a project for a client. Often clients will use specific colors. If this is the case, you can either ask them to let you know which colors they would prefer you to use, or what I will do, and I'll show you a little bit later, is I will sample in Photoshop the color of their logo. So I had one client who had a logo that was green and red. I sampled the green and copied that hex number into Videoscribe right here and that allowed me to use the exact green that the client was using. Even if you don't have Photoshop, I recommend you check out that lesson just to see what sort of options you have available when it comes to customizing your scribes. So we've got that color, we're gonna check it there. And it shows a little preview at the bottom here as to the blue, but you can't really see it until you see it in the scribe because that's quite small in the preview. So let's click the check mark. I can preview it right here. That's what it's gonna look like. And you know what? I don't 
actually like that font now that I'm seeing it there. So I'm gonna go back in here where it says change the text or font. Let's go back into the F. Let's try the good foot font. Now again, I've purchased and found royalty free fonts over the years. So I've got quite a big library of fonts. One website I go to if I'm looking for commercial use free licenses for font is 1001 fonts. The website's right here. So if you're looking to add fonts to your collection, I check out this website first. Okay, so I'm gonna click here and import good foot. We also have a few more options within the, the text properties that we'll look at. We could choose to have this font drawn in backwards. So let's preview that. Let's unclick that. We could make the gap between each word bigger to actually see the difference. Let's put the value of 20 in there. Okay, check mark. Okay, so you can see here that the gap between each word is slightly wider. I'm gonna keep this at zero. This option here allows you to rotate your font. Let's keep it at zero, but good to know that you've got that as an option. Okay, so I'm gonna push the check mark there. And now, because we're using a different font than the default font, the sizing of it is pretty large. So I'm going to, by clicking on one of the squares here, I'm gonna bring that size of that font down a little bit. I'm going to position it right there and and I'm going to reset the camera position. Now, let's say a little bit later on, I wanted to use the same font again. I could either choose it like we saw before if I'm writing out something new or I could click on the text element here. I could click this copy icon on the bottom right of the timeline. I could click on the paste icon and you'll see here in the timeline now I have the text element twice on the timeline. Now you can copy and paste any of these elements if you need to use them again. So I've just grabbed this second text element and moved it down here. I'm going to set that camera position and I'm going to go into properties and change the verbiage here to how exciting exclamation mark check mark that and I'll check mark that and that's allowed me by copying and pasting it's allowed me to keep the same size font that I was using earlier so in some cases I will do that we're going to delete this so go into the property of that element and you can hit the trash bin here that will ask you if you're sure you want to remove this element from your scribe let's check mark that okay so it's gone so let's say i want to add more text by using the text icon at the top of the scribe project here how exciting we'll type in the same thing we'll put the check mark and see how it defaulted to this size now and back to black and it's not the same size as this font. Now I have to, if I want it to be the same size, I have to struggle to find that size here and kind of match it up. Just takes more steps. So if I'm looking for the same size and same color font within another text element, I will always copy and paste the previous text element that I used. And you can see here, sometimes when you move this around, it moves you down the canvas and you have to zoom out to see where all of your other elements are. So let's move it back up here and zoom back in, go down. See how in doing that, I've lost the original camera positions for all of my elements so far. I'm just gonna double click back on this first text element and it will take me back to the camera positions I wanted to work with. Okay, so there we go, gonna lock that there. Let's check out a few more ways that we can make our text customizable and stand out. I'm gonna go 
down into the timeline and click on the properties and now I'm going to click on this icon here that allows me to add or change filters on the text. So let's click on that. Okay, now we've got our little preview here. Let's change the color of glow from black to yellow so it stands out and you can't see it yet, but let's bring this number up to a 10 on this plus button here. Let's also click drop shadow and we can offset the drop shadow. I'll do it by 22 just so you can check it out. I'm going to press the check mark there and let's preview what that looks like. So you saw that the text was glowing with yellow and also had a drop shadow. I'm going to click on this filter icon again and we can also blur the text which you can see taking place in the preview here. If I wanted to change the color of the text, I could also do so in here by clicking it and just choosing another color, but I like black. I don't like that blur, so I'm gonna put that property back to zero. I'm gonna take this filter off. I just wanted to show you what it would look like as an option. So let's bring the glow back down to zero there, and now it is back to the way it looked before. So that's an overview on the text and font options within Video Scribe. If you have any questions, remember I'm here, please let me know, shoot me a message, and I will do my best to help you. Thanks so much, and we are going to see you in the next lesson.